Hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome again to this tutorial where we are going to learn how to uh, do the reaction diffusion that we discussed in the previous tutorials, but in a more interactive way. So this is why I will introduce you some concepts that I think are super relevant, especially when you're working in digital environment that, that has to do with interoperability. Uh, I know that nowadays, like everybody wants to do Grasshopper, everybody wants to do like Rhino, but there are other softwares that actually can do things better and faster. Um, actually, uh, software packages like the one that I'm showing you here, which is Blender, that is um, quite amazing. I was never a huge fan of Blender before because the UI was actually super annoying. But since version 2.8, apparently they listen, and this was a game changer because now the software is just like amazing. The best of all is like free. So if you're a student, you don't have uh, access to other types of, uh, I don't know, like an Autodesk account or your school, or you're, you're, not, you're not even in a, in a school, so you don't have access to buy uh, software like a Rhino license or whatever, these are like, this is a really good option. And I say, I, I, I love Blender because it, it's super fast. That's one thing. It has uh, integration. Um, basically, it, it, it's a software package when you can do like modeling, like really advanced. Actually, it's my, one of my favorite like modeling tools nowadays. You can do like modeling, you can do sculpting. So if you have like some sort of interface and you can model stuff, you can modify meshes like just by painting them, just like ZBrush, for example. You can do like edit texture editing, you can do texture painting, you can do, I don't know, like shading, animation, rendering, and also you have the opportunity of doing, um, believe it or not, um, interesting things such as um, video games. There's a video game engine. I don't know what's the state of that nowadays, but uh, let me assure you that it's actually quite amazing. So uh, what I will show you today is a really nice software package, which is called um, Basically, a plugin that will allow you to do what I show you uh, inside Grasshopper with a, in a much faster way. So, what we will do today will um, allow you to interact. As I was saying, that one thing that is key for for uh, computational design workflows is the interoperability. There is no one software that can do everything. Uh, we know that one of the, I don't know, main issues, for example, with Grasshopper is that it's super slow sometimes. Even if you're doing something in Kangaroo, if you want to do optimization, mix it with Kangaroo uh, using Galapagos, for example, is something that is just not possible for multiple reasons. Um, in this case, uh, for example, doing the reaction diffusion like in real time, like I was showing you with Blender, is also like super slow, super demanding in terms of computational power. So this is why it's good to support uh, what you're doing with interesting tools. So because this is a bonus tutorial, the first one on the reaction diffusion series, I will show you a couple of things. Uh, the first one is um, if you're not familiar with uh, Blender, it's a super advanced uh, 3D tool, Blender. It's, it was released like a long time ago. It's open source. It has a huge community, especially from CG artists that are maintaining uh, the software package. Um, or the, or the whole platform uh, is one of the most advanced. Like, it's amazing that this is free. You can do like pretty much everything. And 
if you have some time like try to do some research about it uh, it's amazing for modeling one of the things that I really like about uh, software like uh, for example I, I started learning 3d studio max when I was uh, 13 years old uh, 3d studio when it was not 3d studio max actually it was 3d studio uh, and it ran uh, through like uh, DOS command I mean it was yeah so it was like really really old and what I like is the way that you basically keep a tidy structure of modeling and blender has that idea as well I mean uh, some people say it is like more complicated because because sometimes like meshes and the vertex structure and the edge structure is like kind of limiting to the things that you want to do of course it's not like free form as um, uh, Rhino for example but you can do like really really like nice thing especially if you're you are in the design world you want to keep that type of like tidy uh, geometrical or topological structure in order to for example if you want to fabricate things so one of the things that I will also post like from now on are some like tips because I don't want to overlap with content and also I want to mention that if you are uh, into learning more computational stuff um, you should follow Jose Luis um, Garcia I will put the link to his channel he's doing this live streaming series this is just a screen capture so it doesn't interfere because this is happening right now I just took a screenshot of his channel he's teaching from like basic Rhino uh, sorry basic grasshopper to more advanced stuff so probably I will try to complement uh, we don't want to like duplicate contents there's no purpose the idea of like doing these tutorials for me is just to contribute to the community contribute to students so I will try to move to more interoperability stuff probably I will do some uh, unity but also like tip and tricks for example for fabrication how will you for example do like a really nice uh, workflow workflow for like correct 3d printing and how you see that how you build for example your meshes affects the way that they get uh, 3d printed as you can see in the back over there I have my 3d printer it's printing some masks uh, for the corona virus and using this model from the USC uh, University of Southern California uh, these are like really good so I'm trying to print for friends and from people who need my need masks so I'm sorry about the noise I don't have a very elaborate studio to do these tutorials I'm doing it from my apartment so uh, I hope this doesn't interfere. I know that the videos before were not very good in terms of um, sound quality. I was using like a really like cheap um, microphone to do it. So I hope this is better. Uh, so um, you want to download uh, download Blender? Uh, it's available for um, windows linux of course in linux it runs amazingly fast and if you have the chance to basically uh install ubuntu uh i use it a lot for machine learning for training models and basically like coding but also uh most of the software package that is available on linux it runs so fast like i'm talking about houdini blender and others so i would totally recommend if i mean i'm trying to go like full open source uh, so this is why I have a copy on my desktop uh, um, like a dual boot when I can basically use Ubuntu whenever I want um, so you download this and it will let me open it again I don't want to save my changes so if I go and if I open blender you will, it's a normal install I would recommend to do this on Windows. I mean, in Mac, it works really well too, but for the workflow that we are going to use today, I would recommend this. So when you open Blender, you will see this. You can, uh, you have like some options to also like contribute. If, you, if, you, if you're if you using this to generate money, I will suggest that please like contribute uh, because this is paying people that are doing like an amazing job. So, here I'm just going to start you have by default here this is the main I'm not gonna focus and explain in blender that this will come in a new tutorial but basically when you uh, start something 
you get like this queue by default and you have a camera you have a light and um, but I will show you basically how to install we're going we are going to use for this tutorial in a specific add-on or plugin for blender and that one is I have it over here just let me go and find it uh, there is one guy that is the master of blender and he's uh, Alessandro Samparelli if you go to his github uh, he's part of uh, code IT a group of masters of grasshopper computational developers like computational designers that develop these tools probably you have heard if you're using grasshopper they do like a lot of stuff and he has like two tools that we're going to use actually if you're into uh, printing masks for the coronavirus he just released this my uh, face add-on that allows you to create your own mask like fit to your face according to a 3d scan um, but for now we're going to use two main tools the first one is tissue tissue is uh, a tool that allows you to create like dual meshes basically like another uh, topological structure from your meshes uh, it allows you to do tessellations in an easy way so like populate components according to your mesh or topological structure uh, it's amazing it's amazing I mean you can go to their website uh, this is uh, code IT a very nice um, um, group of people a computer design Italy and you can go they have a also a Facebook page where you can see like many many resources about not only uh, tissue but other tools so I will totally recommend doing that I mean I am in love with blender I always like to learn like new platforms and now blender is one of the best for me it's also like Python based I know that for example, the tutorials that like the webs, the YouTube channel that I just showed you, Jose Luis, he he talks about the I mean, how he doesn't like uh, Python. I mean, I like Python for some stuff. I hate it for other stuff. My the language I love the most is C sharp. But okay, no, let's not uh, lose time talking about that stuff. Let's get into it. So, what you want to what you want to do you want to go here you can clone the repository if you're using if you have a github account or you just can download the zip file you will download the zip file here's like tissue master I will recommend that if you already have blender installed you go to the latest uh, version that is 2.82 a that's the development right now because that the, the plugin was written for blender 2.82 um, so you will download that zip file and what you will do you will go to blender edit preferences and then you will go to add-ons which is here and you will install from a file right so I will repeat again you go to edit preferences install and you will select your file so you can go to downloads and you can find like many many things and you will find for example here this is the development um, version of tissue you can find the link on the website uh, here it says like development branch the most updated version you can use this one but for now I'm using this one it's working perfectly um, it has like latest feature features so that's Fine. here it says like how to install it um, so if you go you select this install add-on and um, you will see something like this you need to basically check enable the, like uh, click on this checkbox and also it will ask you to install something that is called Numba Numba it's a compiler that makes this super super fast uh, Numba Python if we go here uh, basically this is a high performance uh, Python compiler and basically some people complain that Python is slow compared to other uh, 
languages is because I mean we can discuss about it. We're not going to go into that, but uh, Numba will compile and run your code in Python inside Blender like way faster. So I will recommend you will see a button here that it says install Numba plugin. You will click on it. You will wait some some probably like a couple of minutes. Uh, sometimes in my case it doesn't show that it was installed or it finished installing. If you wait like, I don't know, like two minutes, then you close Blender, open it again, see if uh, tissue, if you uh, click here, enable uh, add-ons only, if you see tissue, and if you check the version 3.40, um, and if you see this, that number module installed correctly, you are good to go. If not, try to do it again. But remember, always do this. The second plugin that we are going to use is the one that is called Mesh Sync, also from Alessandro. I'm telling you, he's the man, like amazing. This will allow us to export and import uh, geometry from, in this case, Grasshopper. So he has some examples. I will go quickly through them, how to basically do this. But the idea is that you can, for example, graph geometry from Grasshopper export it and import it into Blender, do your reaction diffusion, and then import it back to Grasshopper. Or, in this case, we're just gonna go like full like Blender to Grasshopper and that's it. Uh, you can play with that afterwards. I'm trying to keep this video like shorter. I know that I'm already extended, but we have like, I'm trying to keep it like 30 minutes, which is, I think it's okay. So we're gonna go for it. You install it the same way to just Download the zip file, you go to edit preferences, and uh, then you will select it. Mesh sync is here, and it will. I will show you when it will uh, show up. Basically, if this is checked and it says that everything is okay, you're good to go. Second thing, uh, it has this file uh, here, mesh sync. It's a Grasshopper plugin. When you download the file, let me go to Downloads, uh, this file, Mesh Sync Aster, it comes with examples, but also with the Grasshopper components. You can just like uh, drag them into your Grasshopper folder or do the typical thing, uh, special folders, like file, special folders, component folders, and then paste, copy paste these things. Just remember, uh, if you have Grasshopper open, it will uh, uh, ask you this this scene like block uh, files, do you want to unblock them? Uh, if it doesn't ask, basically if you see here like the unblock option, do it. Otherwise it will not load the uh, importer exporter, the mesh sync component. So if you did that, I will recommend if you don't see anything here, just restart Rhino, restart Grasshopper, and you're good to go. So now, let's get into it. Uh, as I was saying, I will just give you like step by step of uh, how this is going to work. I'm going to move this here. Um, so I'm not going to explain much Blender. That's for the next one. Uh, tutorial like a, sp a special playlist with tutorials about like how to model like specific problems or or whatever uh, we are just going to now add just a sphere we're gonna work with the sphere um, like the videos that I'm just like showing right now uh, so that um, just one second Yeah, so like the examples that you will see here now are done with this implementation. So you can see you can do like pretty powerful. Also like the, the intro for this tutorial is like that. So we're good to go. So if you pre press shift and A, you will see this menu. That is the menu, menu that allows you to add geometry or you can go here to add mesh and we will create an I icosphere, a sphere. So you see it's like a triangulated sphere, which has a uh, really nice, even topological structure that will allow, allow us to do like a better simulation. So 
you will see that also adds a menu here and you can choose the name of subdivisions so we will go with like five levels of subdivisions maybe six maybe that's a little bit too much I will set the radius to let's say five and we are good to go uh, you can choose also if you go to this menu here if you click here you can uh, uh, preview the wireframe uh, that's that's fine we can do that let's leave it like this so uh, first things first you see that here there is like uh, an arrow that opens this menu right and this menu has something that is called item that allows you to move your geometry like to uh, do a fine transformations like rotation location scaling uh, also change the dimensions on the one uh, axis uh, we don't we don't want to do that you have like other tools like for selection or things like that uh, things that are related to um, visualization again we're not going to go through that but here you will find the famous tissue this plugin that we just installed so how do we work with this uh, with tissue you can generate for example a dual mesh so here you will see that I press like OK and it's uh, the dual of the mesh you can find like definitions I will show you in a, another tutorial also how to do it you find like other topological structure uh, we don't want to do it right now but also if you press tab or if you go to the upper right uh, left corner of your screen you'll find like many modes that blender have um, the one that we're interested for this uh, tutorial is go to edit mode and you can select by topological elements you can select let's say like the faces or you can select edges um, or you can select uh, vertices if you press a you can select all the vertices and here in tissue you will see that there is a tool that is called weight and weight uh, allows you to basically create uh, a data structure and that it's good to generate for example here the reaction diffusion this is a, a, a an option by default and this is why it's like so amazing uh, so if you press reaction diffusion it will open this menu and we can set our parameters for example we can go uh, steps 50 steps uh, and set the parameters that I show you in a previous tutorial you can try with those values I will set the a link or on the description of the video like parameters that you can use for your simulation for now we're going to use the ones by default you can try like different configurations like fingerprint bacteria worms or like zebra or spirals or whatever again like the the the, the parameters are showing up uh, here now as I uh, talk about this um, so if you set this up you can actually I will now for viewing purposes I'm just disable the visualization of the wireframe this will uh, take you to the painting interface in blender and you can see that now for example I can paint I can just draw I can draw this pretty cool stuff and after I draw this I can just press play and you will see that this is reacting basically you're painting with these components the menu disappear but um, right now if you go to this menu that is the um, vertex groups because we have now defined like two set of vertices and we are painting on one uh, we see that uh, we have here one part that says like tissue reaction diffusion and here it's giving us the parameters that we can modify real time don't go crazy here because you can like ruin the simulation so for example if I decrease the number of uh, the component B you can get like more wormy type of um, 
uh, reaction, right? You can also set like how long is the simulation, for example. Here I'm just I just I'm just pressing play, and this is like animating this. This is like pretty similar to the way that you do it in Houdini that I hope to show you also in another tutorial. But Houdini, it's it's serious stuff. I mean, if you think that by because you know Grasshopper, you know like other node-based edit like procedural editors, no, Houdini is a completely different stuff. It's like high level. It's like C sharp, Python, and C++. C++ is like the the toughest one. Houdini is like C++, the equivalent. So you see here you can get like nice um, distributions of the simulation. You can play also here in wakes, for example, like quantize. Uh, it didn't do anything, but you can, I don't know, play with the radius and you can interfere with the reaction in real time, right? But right now this is only painting over the structure, over our uh, sphere. We're not doing anything like more advanced. So one cool thing here is that we can pause. Our reaction is already done. I can paint again, for example, press play, and this will start reacting again. Pretty nice. You can play with this like a lot, and it's oddly satis satisfying to see and to watch uh, what happens. But uh, Blender is known by this idea of using modifiers, and the modifiers that you have, there is one especially uh, nice that is called Displays. It's like pretty similar to the one that I used to use a lot. Imagine I'm like I'm 38 years old. I started. 25 years ago using 3D Studio Max. So, and I was using this type of tools. Um, here, when you add this modifier, you can uh, select the vertex group when you want to, uh, where you want to apply this modifier. So, you see that now you're using the displacement. You're based on the values that you're painting. You can say, okay, extrude or modify basically create a displacement, use this as a displacement map, that is, it will basically lift or move, do an offset of the vertices that are affected by that. You can choose any of uh, the groups. For example, here I'm using the, the vertex group that has B, and you can modify how this affects the reaction. You see, like go inwards, outwards, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so actually that is like pretty, pretty nice. So let's see what does this mean. If you go back to vertex groups, you can reset your reaction diffusion. And you can say, okay, I want to paint only this. And if you paint, you see like this kind of like weird. So let's do something. Let's paint, for example, a smiley face. And now if you click react, you will see the reaction happening, but now in 3D. Pretty nice, pretty amazing. Uh, and you can, I don't know, play again with the weights and generate like unexpected results like this. If you reset this, you can basically generate new things or create like new parts with components, like bridge, for example, two parts and see what happens. Uh, paint here. I'm bridging regions to create new structures. So actually, this is this is what I'm. I was trying. I mean, it's cool to to know how to do this in Grasshopper, for example. But it's not efficient. Uh, it's not that you're looking always for efficiency, but sometimes you just want to have like workflows that allow you to cope with your with your exploration. And if you're all the time like waiting. Like uh, grasshopper, I mean, it takes like you saw the the pre if I I mean I hope you saw the previous video. Uh, I have to if I have to wait like nine minutes to get a result like this, it's not good, right? What is the purpose of using that if I can do it like faster here or use another tool, right? So this is why I, I like Blender because it it it's lighter, it's faster, and it's made to do this type of reactions. I mean, but I know. It, I mean, when when you when you go like uh, more like um, interactive way in Grasshopper, is where things start to get like a little bit like 
I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of like real time stuff in Grasshopper. Although Caramba, uh, sorry, um, Kangaroo is fantastic, but also like sometimes it gets like really slow. So, when you have this, you can, uh, if you're happy with this, for example, you can go to object mode and to see that this is pretty nice. Uh, right now, you can choose also like shade smooth this, so you can see like the smooth shading. And also to check the wireframe. It's a really nice mesh. I mean, this is something also that I love about the results that you can get in Blender. This is so clean that it allows you also now it will allow us to work in a better way inside Grasshopper. So next thing that we want to do, go to the uh, vertex group here, and you see here the mesh sync. So the mesh sync, it allows you to import geometry and export geometry. The import geometry, I will probably do it in another example when we go like, hardcore inside blender but right now we care about the uh, export you can do real time but again like export real time to grasshopper it doesn't make any sense to me so we are not gonna check this we're just gonna uh, say that we will export all this data we might use it in grasshopper we don't know and we will set one specific uh, folder because basically this will write a txt file probably not the most efficient uh, you can do like probably I mean it will be nice to have a JSON uh, file structure um, but for now let's do this so if you go to tissue you see you can generate files like this like what are the edges not just like obvious information but like also face neighbors that is amazing like faces vertices neighbor like like if I have one vertex vertex what are the neighbors of that vertex to do other types of calculation, the weight uh, of those vertices. So we will just like select this folder and we can say export mesh data. And for this, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're done with this. This is what we want. And now we can go to Grasshopper and we can go to Grasshopper. Uh, we can um, first, um, uh, let's uh, do the import. You have like many options. You have the mesh import, mesh sync import, the advanced or the simple. Uh, if you do just like the mesh sync import, you want to have a toggle. And you want to have a path, a file path. Uh, where do you get that one? I always forget. File path, this one. Again, some people say that, why don't you do icons? Yeah, these are the icons. Uh, someone suggested in one tutorial from Jose, like use bifocals, probably I will use that because uh, many people also ask me, uh, why don't you use like, I don't know, like uh, icons instead of the text, it's easier to read. To me, it's not easier. I hate the icons. Sometimes they don't, they're not very good. So I will use that in uh, bifocals with, will give uh, me also the name and the icon at the same time. For now, I'm just using text, so uh, deal with it. So now, uh, right click, we can select our directory and we can go to tissue, set okay, connect this here. And if we want to visualize, uh, I'm gonna set the preview off. Hopefully this will work. So now it's reading and voila. It's quite amazing. It took only 1.2 seconds. So again, Grasshopper is not the fastest. If you check real time, this is just reading like one state, one frame of the simulation. If you set this to real time with the amount of information that we just imported, 
it will go super slow. There is no purpose on doing that. So you see, this is a such nice mesh. I just love it. I'm just gonna bake it for you uh, to see. I'm just gonna bake this one. So amazing. This is like pretty much like the results that we were getting. This is so nice. And you're getting, you're reading the information about the mesh. At the same time, you're reading vertices. You're reading uh, the edges, all the topological structure in your your mesh. So, how cool is this? Um, let's say we want to. This is one state of the simulation. Let's say we go back to. Um, Let's do something to finish this tutorial. Uh, I will put like an advanced, I mean, you can check the, the, the samples of tissue and you can see like the different functionalities of the advanced importer, exporter and whatever. The advanced, because it gives you more information about the neighbors, uh, you can use it, for example, to create new, uh, to use it with IVs, for example, to do unfolding of the meshes. Imagine like doing the unfolding and then just like laser cutting the parts in that. And now generating like a shape like a pavilion like everybody wants to do a pavilion let's do a pavilion or a lamp everybody wants to do a lamp let's do a lamp uh, let me go to my collab um, I showed you this in the previous tutorial if you go to collab I have I think oops just let me change accounts It will take only a couple of seconds. In the meantime, what we want to do, just reset our reaction diffusion and we can paint again. So for example, I will paint, the strength is too much. So let me reset this again. Yeah, we want to reduce the strength of the values. So let's start with just one point. Again, I will reset it as one point. And in the meantime, Okay, I am in my Google Colab right now. Let me open uh, my previous notebooks because I have something that might be of interest for you. Uh, that I said I will post. This is a code to generate. Uh, this is in Python to generate like the different patterns. So for example, let's say we want to replicate bacteria with our reaction diffusion. I will put this in the description. Uh, so let's say we want bacteria. We will set this as uh, 50 steps. We will leave this as it is. So the concentrations, we will start with the concentration on A of not 0.18, but 0.14. Uh, the, the component B we will do 0 0.06 the F value we will do 35 not 55 and the K value not 62 but 65 so we will start only with this point and let's see what we get from the simulation so if we press start how amazing is this how fast how cool it is just to see this replicating in real time this is something that you cannot do in grasshopper in a decent way i mean this so let's say if i oh i want to actually do the opposite not the b parameters let's say if i want to play a little bit and quantize this value nothing happens let's say if i want to introduce some chaos see the bacteria replicating this is quite amazing let's go back to uh that this is quite amazing i mean something some somebody will say like oh i can model this and grasshopper yeah that's not the point uh of course like that's not hard to do but see this just seeing this bacteria pattern like replicating is just like quite amazing so let's let's do that let's make this finish it will reach a state 
let's go back to the vertex groups and let's say export mesh data and now we can go back to grasshopper and now because we have this bait now we want to get the other one false true oops um, probably it didn't do it let me see if it did it in blender export mesh data it's duplicating the data so let me just try to see if i can delete this accept export mesh data now it should do it false true oops something happened let me set the directory again something's going on it should work now sorry about that like uh, I just had like one uh, problem with uh, exporting so you want to make sure that you're exporting your data in the right way for some reason it was just like giving me it was exporting everything with a weird name so you can just generate a new folder and it will work so this worked so now we can see that we have this new shape we can of course bake it and we have a second iteration of what we did amazing let's try the last one uh, one of the patterns that I love the most let's try the uh, for example like the fingerprint pattern and with this we will finish our tutorial so we can always go to vertex group just uh, click in reset wireframe I will just paint again like one let's paint that for example or start like this you can choose the points where you want to start your reaction uh, let's modify the parameters here so for example to do the fingerprint you want to do point 19 the component b you want to do point 05 the f parameter actually you can also like play the, put this to point 0.5 if you want uh, you can experiment with those parameters not too much because sometimes you will make the reaction like quite unstable uh, point 0.06 and here you will leave it to point uh, 062 so you want to go back and you will start seeing this reaction isn't this amazing look at this it's just amazing so it's like very nervous system right actually I think that they use blender for this so you can I don't know like quantize that didn't do anything so let's say let's increase this and the strength Let's create some like, I don't know, go crazy. You can modify the patterns. You can choose where you want to do it. Uh, you can apply this to many things, like the text, again, like the intro that I had for this video. Super nice. Let's uh, leave it like that. You can do one more thing if you want. You can go to object mode to visualize the result. Uh, you can apply, for example, a uh, subdivision surface. It will take a while because what we're doing is like quite heavy uh, it did it so if you see now it's another type of like cleaner uh, a subdivision is like a sub D is like the, something that Rhino 7 will uh, it's adding now the new Rhino that is coming uh, to work with subdivision surfaces like Clayo or um, T splines that was what that was part of also like a plugin for Rhino one of the best it's too bad that it's not available for Rhino anymore so let's go back to vertex group uh, let's so you see I can here now just delete this uh, export mesh data now everything appears with the right name and we can go to grasshopper 
false true it will take a while again now we have more information so you see it's taking longer uh, if you want like real real time probably you see now it's five seconds so yeah you can I don't know if you're really into this and you have the money you can buy a thread reaper set up and get like as many cores to do what you want to do so I just bake this uh, oh I made a mistake. I baked everything, not just the mesh. Uh, I just want to bake the mesh. So now, for example, if I go to Arctic visualization, look how nice, how easy it is to generate this type of geometries. So I will leave the tutorial up to here. Sorry that I extended 15 minutes of my goal. Uh, but I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please subscribe and share the content. Also, you can follow my Instagram account, Diego Pinochet, because I'm also like um, adding other stuff also in that um, social network platform. So, thank you very much. And remember, learn something. And if you learn something, you share something. That's the only way that we can actually make this computational design I, I will not say community but like uh, I don't know people or our skills better so thank you very much